The primary focus of the lab leak theory has been concentrated on the Wuhan Institute of Virology and its director, Shi Zhang Li, known for her coronavirus experiments involving bats at the Institute's two labs. But there is another lab in the city of Wuhan that has received far less attention, the level two lab of the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And like Shi Zhang Li at the Institute of Virology, the CDC lab had its own coronavirus specialist, Tian Junhua, a man who spent years catching bats in remote locations, bringing thousands of samples back to the CDC's Wuhan lab. Notably, on December 2nd, 2019, the Wuhan CDC lab abruptly moved to a new location, barely 900 feet from the Huanan Seafood Market the same market that was initially blamed by Chinese authorities for the coronavirus outbreak. Hi everyone, and welcome to Truth Over News with Jeff Carlson and Hans Manka. In 2012, Tian Junhua, a virologist at the Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention, started collecting bats from remote locations in China for further study in his Wuhan lab. In 2017, Tian bragged to a Chinese newspaper that he had personally captured 10,000 bats in remote caves and that he did not take any safety precautions. Chinese media even showed photos of a totally unprotected Tian collecting bats. On some of his trips, Tian brought his wife along to assist his efforts. He says she knew nothing about bats and was frightened, but went along anyway because she wanted to help her husband. Tian also told the same newspaper that he was frequently sprayed with bat urine and blood. Given the frequency and level of exposure, Tian says that he expected to fall ill, but was lucky not to, or so he claims. Tian is not just a random bat enthusiast. He's an accredited scientist with the Chinese CDC. His work features in international scientific journals such as Nature and the medical journal PLOS Pathogens. Notably, Tian has co-published at least three scientific articles with Edward Holmes, one of those papers was on experiments they had conducted on a new type of bat virus personally collected, sampled, and discovered by Tian himself, the Huang P virus. Holmes recently gained notoriety as one of the main participants in Anthony Fauci's secret teleconference in February of 2020, which marked the start of efforts to suppress and censor the lab leak theory. Holmes would later play a prominent role in promoting the natural origins theory when he co-authored the now infamous Proximal Origin Letter in Nature magazine together with Christian Anderson. That letter proved immensely influential and was used by Fauci, the corporate media, and big tech to suppress any discussion of the lab leak theory. And the mutations that it took to get to the point where it is now is totally consistent with a jump of a species from an animal to a human. So, I mean, the, the paper will be available. I, I don't have the authors right now, but we can make that available. Too. Holmes is also linked to British Pharmaceutical Trust director Jeremy Farah, with both men having co-published various papers together. It was Farah who, along with Fauci, organized the secret teleconference. Perhaps even more significantly, Holmes is a close associate of the head of the Chinese CDC, Gao Fu. Not only have Holmes and Gao co-published various articles, but Holmes was also a guest professor at Gao's organization from 2014 to 2020. And Gao Fu, of course, is Tian's boss. Which brings us back to the Chinese CDC's lab in Wuhan. According to a Chinese whistleblower who published an article online shortly after the pandemic broke out, 
The Wuhan CDC kept disease-ridden animals in its labs, including some 605 bats. That same whistleblower paper also detailed how reckless Tian was in collecting bat samples. The whistleblower's article was taken down shortly after it was posted, but not before copies of it were archived. It is not known what happened to that whistleblower. On December 2nd, the Wuhan CDC suddenly moved their lab's location to a spot just a few hundred yards from the Huanan Seafood Market, which would initially be cited as the origin of the early COVID-19 cases. The CDC's new location for their lab was also directly adjacent to another hotspot of later COVID cases, the Union Hospital, where a group of doctors first became infected. Although this lab has received little, if any, media attention, the World Health Organization's lead investigator into the virus's origins, Peter Van Embrick, privately voiced his concerns over this facility to a Danish documentary crew. Emberich essentially confirmed what the Chinese whistleblower had pointed out more than a year earlier, that the Wuhan CDC lab was handling coronaviruses, but without the same safety levels and protocols employed by the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The Wuhan CDC kept the sudden move of their lab quiet and away from media attention. Embra claims he only became aware of the move after he noticed that as he was being shown around the Wuhan CDC lab's facilities, everything appeared to be new. Emberich noted that the move of the CDC lab coincided remarkably well with the start of the COVID outbreak, telling the Danish film crew that that's when it all started. As Emberich noted, the physical movement of a lab can create precarious and unsafe handling conditions and procedures. Interestingly, despite the concerns Embrick voiced to the Danish documentary crew, the only mention of the Wuhan CDC lab's move in the entirety of Embrick's investigative WHO report comes in a one-sentence entry on page 119 of the 122-page report. Embrick had famously announced at a February 9, 2021 press conference in China that the COVID virus had a natural origin and firmly stated that a lab leak was extremely unlikely. Embrek also claimed that his Chinese counterparts had been highly cooperative during his investigation and stated that his team was never pressured to remove critical elements in their report. Embrek would continue to publicly push the natural origins narrative. The problem was everything Embrek was saying publicly was countered by his private remarks to a Danish TV crew. A lab leak was seen as likely. The Chinese had not been cooperative and they directly pressured Embrek and his team to play down any lab leak discussions. There is another particularly relevant element to the story that is contained in Emberex World Health Organization report. The first officially stated date in that report for an individual becoming ill with COVID is December 8th, 2019, nearly a week after the Wuhan CDC lab moved to its new location. But this date fails to align with a detailed academic report that was published in The Lancet on January 24, 2020. That report was published by 29 Chinese doctors and shows that the first known COVID case occurred on December 1, 2019, not December 8. And the patient had no known ties to the Huanan seafood market. The Lancet report provides detailed day-by-day -day evaluation of the early COVID case developments and contains a far greater level of granularity than does the World Health Organization's report. Using this more detailed empirical data, the first known case of COVID occurred exactly one day before the Wuhan CDC lab officially moved to its new location. It is difficult to find any information about the Wuhan CDC lab's move or the lab itself, other than the fact that it is a lower level biosafety level two lab. The only mention of the lab's sudden move 
comes from MBREX World Health Organization report. And we have yet to pin down where the Wuhan CDC lab was located prior to the move. 